Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I'm very sorry I'm unable to uh, attend this uh, beautiful seminar that's going on. But I think uh, it will be a very good idea if I start uh, talking briefly about sustainability. It's a nice fashionable word, you know, to talk about. So what I intend to do is we have to see what is good for Pakistan as far as sustainability is concerned. Now, if uh, one looks at the, the actual meaning of sustainability, in a Webster's dictionary, it talks about very different to what we are basically looking at. But once we are looking at something that is sustainable, the way I see it is that, that it doesn't go to waste what we use. So Isme, there will be two or three things which are basic. First thing that has to be is that why we are talking about construction, we are talking about buildings or we are talking about homes. So let's, let's limit ourselves to homes because what you can do in a home, you can also do in a larger building generally. So in a home, you have to use materials that are indigenous, locally available, locally made. Now, unfortunately, today it's become fashionable to use fashionable things that, you know, you're getting imported tiles from Italy, we're getting it from Brazil, marble from uh, here and there, and which is really sad because if you're looking at a home, these fancy materials don't make the home comfortable. Yes, it's a house that you want to use expensive things to impress somebody else. I don't believe that. I think uh, because it's a, ha a home and home for yourself, it has to be comfortable for you. And that becomes very important. I mean, as you see, uh, uh, this is my little home. It's on 400 yards. And I have a, uh, this is a courtyard that I have inside the house. And uh, this is where we sit and this is where the whole family is. So this is the whole area where my grandchildren are and they're running around and, uh, and we don't have to worry about a large garden that you maintain and you are throwing drinking water in the garden. We are going to talk about two or three things. One is how to construct and what to construct with and how long it should last. What we are basically doing today is a client will come to us that they have bought a piece of land and the land already has a house on it. Now, if it already has a house on it, they say, Gee, oh, this is not a very nice thing. So let's break this. Okay, somebody has put good money in there while they make a house and it's only 15 years old, 20 years old, and it's not worth living in anymore. And it's not the planning. It is that it's falling apart. Now, if you look at good architecture or good design, you could look at a good hand knotted carpet. A hundred years old, it's not old yet. Or if you look at a very nice old car, which becomes a classic, nothing happens to that. So now these are very temporary type things that I'm talking about. Uh, a carpet is fabric that's made to last over a hundred years, cars. But then if you look at buildings, so what I'm really saying is that you make something that should last a hundred years. So clients will come in and you know, they bought an old house and they said, you know, this is a classic house that I've got. Classic, the way I see it, comes from the word class. So it had class to it. Now you just go and restore it, or you can go and make it very nice to your convenience. What we did actually, and uh, some of you may have seen at the Indus Valley School, that uh, there was an old building that was coming down uh, in Karadar, and we said, why don't we just take this to Clifton? And we did. Now, that building were go-downs, they were cotton go-downs. So, we moved it to Indus Valley School and they are very nice, beautiful, column-free drawing studios. So, all the drawing and design studios are in this old building, which is about 120 years old. Now, that is an adaptive reuse. So, almost everything can have an adaptive reuse an old railway station, an old warehouse, an old something, but you can only use it if it's worth saving. Now, most of our older buildings, they're made out of stone and they're not going anywhere. If you look at the Indus Valley School, it's about 32 years old now. The, there is a newer building 
behind this old Nasaranji building. 32 years and it looks like it was done yesterday. And I feel that it should be able to last 100 years. You have to maintain here and there, a hinge may go bad or a window may, may break or something like that. So you have to maintain a little, but the main structure, nothing happens to that. So one thing, indigenous, you make it strong. Everything, now you look at furniture, you look at your great grandfather's desk, or you look at their chair. And you say, oh my God, I really want to use this chair. And you use it as a masterpiece in your living room. Uh, because it was worth keeping there. Because it was made with passion. So go to a good architect and your goal should be it should last a hundred years. And that's how I think, uh, that's what I call sustainable. Another thing that is going very, very wrong in this country is water. And as we all know, there will be wars about water later on. This is one of the very few countries where we don't recycle water. There are high technologically uh, made machines that can recycle water in every home because 70, 80, 90 percent of your water is what you throw away. Whether it's in the WC or in the shower or in the garden or whatever, all of that can be used. We call it grey water, but it's clean and it can be reused. So in a house, in apartment buildings, shopping malls, they should all, it, you know, it should be a law that you have to recycle your water and you have to give it away. Now, we are using drinking water for construction purposes, thousands and thousands of gallons. We are using drinking water for water-cooled air conditioning units where thousands of gallons are used every day and you throw it in the air. How sad. You could use this recycled water for that. So here I'm saying that these are all these sustainable things that we should be doing for our country. And then the, the list goes on and on and on. Once we start thinking that what can we reuse and what can make our lives easier and less problematic. So uh, I think I've already said too much. And uh, once again, I apologize for not being there in person. So thank you very much and have a good day.